Welcome, everybody, to Rock Talk with the Doc Rocker. I am Jeff Benomo, joined once again with the Doc Rocker himself, Danton Arlotto. And today we have something a little different. I don't think we've ever done a podcast just about one band and one album, but we are doing that today, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, and we were planning to do this podcast last week in celebration of the launch for Halloween's brand new album, self-titled Halloween, released June 18th, 2021. But uh, but 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 something interesting happened last week, Jeff. Right? That we we had to push back the podcast for a week. Yeah, my brother-in-law came in and and I had to go drinking with him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and not only that, but you didn't you guys just adopt a new puppy? Yeah, we got yeah we got the new puppy, Lena. We got her on Monday, actually, though. So, but yeah, that's so all yeah. the, the preparations for that i'm sure was a big adjustment too so so we pushed oh, yeah. so here we are we're a week late to the party but we're nonetheless stoked to talk about this album i know jeff is definitely stoked because this is one of his Absolutely. favorite bands uh and i'm sure this was very welcome for your ears when you listened to it yeah how, how many oh, times yeah, you listened to it? how many times i've listened to it so far uh, yeah. i don't know um did you lose count no, <laughs> after I, the first at day least 10. Oh I, it really, I, it hasn't, I haven't stopped listening to it. I, you know, I, I, I put it in when I go to work, when I'm at work, when I'm just kind of doing stuff I don't need my ears for, I'm turning it back on nice. at night when I'm editing stuff or, or doing stuff, you know, around the house, I'm just listening to it. I've listened to it a lot. I, I, um, so no surprise there. I really like it. But before, before we even get into the reaction and review of this album, uh, I want to do a little history on the band uh, because I think, what? It's important because of this release uh, to go through the history. It's, it's a really kind of strange history of this band. They've um, they haven't had a real like uh, steady lineup, you know, for more than like a couple of years until uh, more recently. Uh, and this band goes back pretty far. 1984, uh, Hamburg, Germany. Um, they they were formed out of two bands, Iron Fist and Gentry. It was uh, the first lineup consisted of uh, singer and guitar player Kai Hansen, uh, guitar player uh, Michael Wiethkaff. I'm probably pronouncing these German names wrong, but you know, uh, bassist Marco Groskopf, and drummer Ingo Schwitzenberg. And uh, they did two albums, uh, an EP, and then they did Walls of Jericho. Then Michael Kiske came in, and everyone knows him pretty much as the voice of the Keeper of the Seven Keys albums, which um, that pretty much established Halloween as like a notable heavy metal band. And what I say that uh, they're one of the godfathers and one of the progenitors, the creators of European power metal. And what that sound was, um, what I really liked about it back when that stuff first came out, I was in high school, uh, 1987, 1988 was it sounded like Iron Maiden. It sounded like Judas Priest, but it was happy. You know? It yeah, had it wasn't happy. quite so dark. It had a lot yeah, more of an uplifting. Sound, you know? Yeah. Very positive sound, you know? And that's, that goes, and, and we talked about this in the Power Metal um, episode. That's kind of what Power Metal ends up being, and very happy and, and kind of yeah, it's a morale booster. It's rally the troops, yeah. go fight the dragon, you know, that sort of thing. And, and then there's a lot more of that, like, medieval fantasy tie with the lore of the lyrics and things like that. Yeah. And Halloween is yeah. no exception to that. Right. The first two albums by Halloween are more like thrash uh, albums. Walls of Jericho, especially, very thrash influenced. Um, then Kai Hansen leaves the band. Roland Grandpa joins. And then they do two albums that uh, aren't very good as far as like most of the people say uh pink bubbles go ape and chameleon i like them for what they are i especially like chameleon i know you really didn't but that was 91 and 1993 right and that, see, and that led to and i did some research on this too uh for the podcast that led to the firing of both the drummer and the singer michael kiske and switzerberg actually was quoted somewhere saying he was dissatisfied with the direction of the band and you're gonna like this he even went so far as referring to their song on chameleon uh the song windmill as shit mills <laughs> i would agree with that 100 percent i now, sadly, it's all coming know, back you know, bad memories are washing over me from that assignment <laughs> uh so after they left after they left the band uh schwitzenberg who's i really love this drummer i always did he was an amazing drummer he he committed suicide in 1995 by jumping in front of a train oh my in Hamburg, God. Germany. Yeah, 29 years old, and, and that was it. And like, if you listen to the drubbing on those Keepers albums, especially like 
Eagle Fly Free. I mean, that's like some killer drumming, man. You know, back in 19, uh, 1987, that was like, that's like the power metal beat right there, you know. Um, Kiski went on to release uh, one album of note that I'll say is, one's the first solo album of note I really like, Instant Clarity, 1996. Uh, that had Adrian Smith on it and Kai Hansen mm-hmm. playing guitar. That's probably why. Uh, the rest of his albums uh, are not metal. Uh, he, he, and he did some other side projects like Avanstasia, which was a rock opera, Super Red, which was okay. Plays Vendome, the first album's really good if you want to check that out. Um, and uh, Unisonic, especially the album Light of Dawn that came out in 2014. Unisonic was pretty much him, Kai Hansen, and some other power metal guys. It's kind of, it, it's really, that may be your homework sometime because the Unisonic okay. Light of Dawn album it's pretty much a Halloween album. It sounds like a power metal album. And it is a power metal album. It's a really nice return to form because he really did not do metal for a very, very long time. So now back to Halloween. Uh, in 1994, they got Andy Garris as their singer and uh, Yuli Kush as the drummer. And they released two really, really good albums back to back. Master of the Rings is a fantastic Halloween album. I didn't like it at first, you know, different singer, different. And Andy Darris is a completely different singer than, than Michael Kiske. But, you know, it's a killer album, Master of the Ring. And then Time of the Oath, 1996, those two albums, if, if anyone wants to check them out, they're great. Um, you know, then there's you know, lineup changes here and there. I'm not going to go into that because and then uh, from then on, they released a bunch of albums. Andy Darris probably has 10 albums with them, you know. Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot. Yeah, he's been the singer in a band way longer than anybody else. And then on November 14th, 2016, the band announced that both Hanson and Kiski were rejoining Halloween for the Pumpkins United World Tour that take that took place from uh, October 2017 to December 2018. I missed them in New York, and I'm still mad about that. And then, of course, we're up to the present day. In June of 2021, the reunited lineup released their 16th studio album, just called Halloween. So there you go. That's uh, in a nutshell. That's the. There you go. That's the band. That's the band history. So are you expecting some sort of like, uh, Iron Maiden esque Reformation era that like going forward that they're gonna like keep this like full lineup of all the former singers and like kind of go forward in that direction or is this more of I like think so. a specific celebration of something just to kind of commemorate the band and then they're gonna sort of go in a different direction? You think? Originally, originally back in, in 2016, that's what it was just, just was going to be. The Pumpkins Who Died World Tour was all three singers, all the guitar players they could find. Uh, Roland Grappo did never came back. Uh, he he did, he decided not to do that. Um, but so three guitar players, three singers. Then they they were doing songs from all their eras, and that's what the tour was. And then they really, they they wrote they wrote one new song. I think the song was called Pumpkins United, and that was it. And then of course you know COVID happened and. You know, and then everything kinda, came to a stop for a while, but then much, they worked on I, this. Yeah, yeah, but that's what they were doing in, in the meantime. So um, I think it's going to continue. As far as I know, all the things I've been reading is this is just the beginning. And um, so let's le- that'll lead us right into our review. And yes. I'll start it off by saying this. And it's going to kind of bounce off of what you just said. What this album made me feel as soon as I started it was imagine this. A very close friend of yours who you haven't spoken to in a long time shows up at your door with a case of really good craft beer. And you just hang out with them, reminisce of days gone by, catch up on life, drink and laugh for hours. And you know you'll be doing this again soon. That's what that album made me feel as soon as I, as soon as I started it. I'm sure that pretty much hits the nail on the head for many Halloween fans out there that probably feel the same thing. Um, I know for me as an outsider, uh, I didn't really have any sort of expectation. So I kind of, I, I did as always, just like with our listening homework, you know, whereas Jeff sat here and like really dug in and listened to it several times. I did it just once today, right before starting the podcast. So I'm going to give like my absolute cold first impression Um uh, I mean, I really liked it. I, I liked it pretty much start to finish. Uh, I didn't do the bonus tracks. I just did 
the the first 12 uh, leading up to skyfall and ending with that but i, I kind of like, like my first impression for it was this is like this really nice kind of grand culmination like i'm hearing bits and pieces of what i'm guessing are all the different eras i'm hearing you know i'm hearing the contrast between the different singers i'm hearing even it reminded me a lot of maiden you know which is you know, no surprise to anyone who follows this show that we're going to make comparisons to Iron Maiden. But going back to their like Reformation back in what 2000 with Brave New World, when they had the same sort of idea of like their former singer comes back, one of their former guitar players comes back and they figure, screw it, let's just have everyone come together and we'll make the band a little larger, a little bigger and beefier. Right. And we'll enjoy this kind of new, really thick, heavy sound and we'll celebrate that. And but I'll uh, tell you what, I couldn't yeah. see, I couldn't see Iron Man doing this with all the singers though. I couldn't see. I, I couldn't either. No. And the animal. It would be interesting, though. I can see them bringing Deano back, but just with the Blaze Bailey stuff, not just because I don't like him as a singer, but because I know he's largely not liked in the Maiden fandom. Uh, I feel yeah. like that would not be as celebrated of a return. Um, Deano's one thing, and especially because he's still a fantastic singer, too. Um, but yeah, like as far like going back to like the guitar playing, like I could hear it, like I could hear like the clear, like every so many bars in the solo sections, all the instrumental bits of Halloween self title. Like, all right, there, I don't know any of the guitar players, but like I'm hearing like a real specific stylistic contrast from player to player. And that was fun for me as a guitar player to, to listen to that. Um, it had a lot of what I like, uh, I had a lot of different things, it had a lot of stuff that I wasn't expecting at all some things that really really kind of turned me on to them and is definitely making me curious to kind of go back and dig and do i know i listened to keeper of the seven keys and i did chameleon mm -hmm. but there's so much out there that i haven't heard and i'd like to go back yeah. and kind of revisit and yeah, kind of get to know the Andy Darris, better. you may like you might like them more the Andy Darris. um i'd be curious era, to hear those especially which, those I mean, 96 albums that you mentioned yeah the first two especially but i mean they go like I said, they made a bunch of albums with him. Uh, Time of the Oath, and they, The Dark Ride, uh, Better Than Raw, Rabbit Don't Come Easy, <laughs> Seven Sinners. They're the ones I'm thinking of right now. I, I haven't really listened to them much, but mm -hmm. Andy Darris is an excellent songwriter. Um, and getting back to his voice, he's an excellent singer, too. He does just does sounds... he play anything? Is he just a vocalist, or does he play any instruments? He's a, I, I, he probably plays guitar. He doesn't play guitar on these uh, songs, but I know okay. he's a songwriter. So I'm assuming he has, yeah, as yeah. a tool. Michael yeah. Kiske also yeah. plays guitar too. They're both, you know. Now Kiske didn't write anything on this album, pretty much, as far as the music goes. He, That's uh, interview I read, yeah, he interview I read with him recently. Yeah, well, I mean, he's the guy that everyone knows with Halloween. Halloween was a lot bigger, I believe, at least in the United States, in you know, During in the eighties, yeah, yeah, right, right. People know him from that. The I Want Out, The Eagle Fly Free, The Keeper of Seven Keys, Part One and Two. That's what people really remember about Halloween, unfortunately. But um, which does a disservice to the Andy Darris era because I've learned to like that for what it is. Um, with that said, those three singers, it's really nice about this album is it's not like, well, this guy sings this song, this guy sings one song, this guy. They no, all they're sing all, all yeah, the there's song. a really quick rotation, which I really liked too. That it's was nice. Like and yeah, from our preview, <laughs> listening to Skyfall a couple weeks ago when they launched the yeah. single version of that, that was like, I remember hearing that and thinking, if the whole album is like this, I'm going to dig it, where it's like, here's like one line by singer A, and then here's a line by singer B, here's a line by singer C. Not only did they do that pretty consistently throughout the album, but they also had a lot of moments where they're, um, they, they have like all like the three-part harmony being stacked, which I really enjoyed, um, especially... And just hearing like this really nice alternation of like one singer is like having the main melody and the other one is doing like a sub vocal part to harmonize with it. And then they switch, you know, there's a lot of good switching back and forth. Yeah. There's a lot of really nice call and response, you know, um, which uh, vocally this album was very, very, very powerful. Oh, and again, that was one of my expectations. I was expecting the vocals to be really consistently good and deliver some real high octane, some real high range stuff. And it does that on every single track. And it's awesome. So singer, yeah, enthusiast, you got a lot to listen to with this album. Definitely check it out. It's great. It doesn't let up. It, it, there's no. not a slow song. There's not a dud. I don't think it's really no, like not at it, all. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like it's like punching you in the face and smiling. It's like yes, you know, it's it's triumphant. You know, it's, it's very, very powerful. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, here's another really interesting thing about this album: the drummer. I got to talk about the drummer, Danny Loeb. I think his last name is pronounced Loeb, Loeb, something like that. Anyway, he's been with the band for a while. Mm -hmm. He he plays on 
the same drum set that Ingo, the one who died, used, I believe, on the Keepers tour. They found oh, that awesome. drum set. They found the drum set. They bought it off a fan who owned it. And he used it to because they were explaining, like, it's just those drums back then sound different than the drums now. So they use the same exact drum set as almost like um, a little you know, a salute to their fallen, their fallen friend. They use this drum set uh, to, to record. And also as a proper yeah. homage to their former sound. Yeah. It's yeah. twofold that too, sure. for what they were sure. going for um, artistically. And I, I really appreciate that. And I, I, when I, once I read that, I'm like, I went back and I'm, I'm listening to the drums and I'm like, yeah, you know, they sound great, you know, and they have almost, a, yeah, I can, yeah, I can see like an older vibe to them, I guess. Um, you know, okay, let's talk lyrically. Uh, it's, it's Halloween. It's, there's some silliness to it because that's what they are. They're, they're fun. They're silly. They're, they're, you know, sometimes they're not the best writers. As yeah, far they, they as sound like, like a band that doesn't take themselves too seriously. I, I remember, like, oh, yeah. I, I, the, one, one of the Robot lines I caught. King. Yeah, Robot King, Robot King. the entire song, Robot King, <laughs> definitely delivers on that front. The, the, the first time it really popped out to me was on the third track, Best Time, where, like, the, in every chorus, the, one of, I don't know which singer this is. You, you could clarify who it is for me, um, who comes in in between the lines and says, you know, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, kind of delivers those, like, kind of shouting lines. Yeah. yeah. Which I, I think is so Kai corny, Hansen. and yeah. I love it. It's great. Yeah, I think that's Kai Hansen. I'm not exactly sure, but I okay. think that, that... That would make sense. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, I think, you know, start to finish... I, I, I've loved it. I, I like I said, I've, I've been listening to it like since it came out. It's gonna be my album of the year probably. Um, nice. It, I don't, I don't see anything on the horizon that's probably gonna beat it for me. And a lot of it was, you know, me wanting to hear these guys play again together. Um, and I, again, I missed them live. They were in New York. They did two day, two days in New York. And by the time I found out about it, like the tickets were just ridiculous. They had had a second day. I don't remember where they were. I think the Irving Theater. I could be wrong, but um, by the time I found out about it, I added a second day, which was a Sunday, and the tickets were like a lot. And uh, me and the wife were doing, we had a, we, had, we did have a busy weekend that weekend too. I don't remember what it was, but it was like, ah, oh, you know what? They will come back around. Catch you know? next time. Again. Yeah. 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 Next and time. You know, after COVID, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. And, you know, they already put out a live DVD of, of the Pumpkins United world tour and there's a lot of video online you can watch about uh them playing at Vakken, and it just sounds great and i was i was expecting i wasn't expecting this though i was expecting a decent album but this is like for me it's like when brave new world by iron maiden came out like i could not stop listening to that like that was like because i never thought it would happen that was another thing like back in the late 90s you know, it's like, all right, Dickinson left. Smith is gone. Yeah. This is now yeah. what Maiden is. And, you yeah. know, and like it like, or not, we're going to keep going. Yeah. And that was Maiden's attitude. And that was uh, Halloween's attitude for a while, too. I was like, screw this guy. You know, and I, I, I watched a couple of interviews online with Michael Kiske and Andy Darris talking. And those guys are like the best of friends now, which is really, really cool because they're, you know, the, he, Kiski left and Darius replaced him. So it's like, you know, are they going to butt heads or what? really easily have that, like, um, that animosity. Right, right. And they're like, but you know, it's, hey. It's nice to see that there isn't any. They said they like to drink red wine and, you know, hang out. <laughs> you know, I also, I also have to admit, I uh, 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 mentioned this because I do like to mention this. I used to, back when the internet was new, way back when, um, in the late nineties, I was writing for a website called electricbasement.com. And I started doing interviews with, with metal musicians and they hooked me up with, with Michael Kiske. And I was really excited because my favorite vocalist. Yeah. And so I did, I did a telephone interview with him back in, in the, in the nineties. I don't remember exactly when it was, maybe it was, no, it wasn't the nineties. No, it was probably the early two thousands. Okay. I, I know it was definitely before, um, it was definitely before Dimebag was shot because when he was shot, I was writing for the, for the electric basement. It was that was when the, the website was about to shut down. Like it shut down. Sure, I, I forget what year that was. I so, want to say like 2002, 2003. 2000, yeah, somewhere early 2000s. I interviewed him. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, two, uh, going back to the 90s, that was too far. Uh, but uh, it was still <laughs> like 
the internet was a different place. And um, sure. I was just writing for fun. And yeah, I got to interview Michael Kiske and I kept on asking him about, you know, Halloween and stuff. And he's like, look, he's like, I'm not into metal anymore. And I'm like, why? I like metal. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but you know, yeah, I can imagine that being really disheartening to have that kind of interview. Like, yeah, that would have been happened to like Bruce Dickinson, like after he yeah. left. What if he left and it was just like, I'm done with this whole metal thing? And then you have an interview he with him and he's like, I'll never. And it's like, oh man, that's like a knife in the heart because, yeah, so and then, you know, that, but, that, but you know, that Bruce was was real similar. Well, was Bruce was doing interviews, um, when he was doing the Skunk Works band. Uh, he would say the same thing. He'd be like, I'm more than a metal guy, you know, and it did not like he disowned it, but he was like, ah, I'm doing something else now. And it really showed. And then of course, you know, Bruce got with Adrian and Adrian's like, we got to write something heavy. And then, you know, everything's nice. Everything's great in the world awesome now. Stuff. Yeah. 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 That, 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 that 90s, uh, th- th- there was like those two or three albums that you had me go through with those two um, that I w- it was just awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, like, would have been in the 90s. <laughs> The nineties were a weird time, you know, like, like metal just kind of dropped off uh, pretty much until like the early two thousands when it came back around when it was like, Oh, this is cool again, you know? And, you know, Dickinson got back with with Adrian Smith and Michael Kiske started hanging out with Kai Hansen and they started doing things together. You know, um, you know, Kai Kai Hansen went on to do Gamma Ray. I know I gave you one Gamma Ray album. You weren't like, you were kind of like lukewarm about, but yeah, um, I remember it was pretty, yeah, they're pretty successful with that. And and that kind of went, like on a straight kind of Judas Priest on speed kind of thing. That's what kind of what, what he was doing with Gamma Ray. But this re- reunited lineup, I can't say much more about the Halloween album other than it's great from beginning to end. My, uh, my favorite track on it is Angels, I think. Yeah, um, that's probably my that's favorite track. That's that or Indestructible. Favorite. That yeah. or Indestructible. Uh, Angels, I'll, I'll say this, it, there's couple parts and it reminded me a little bit of, of dream theater i, I yes. don't know where it's coming okay yeah, got yeah. Same, it, it, it definitely a- angels has like that real kind of symphonic flair and i don't mean symphonic as in like big orchestral strings and like that kind of stuff i mean there is a little bit of that you, there is like some i think there's like some violins and some stuff like that from what i remember but like symphonic in the nature of like the song kind of goes through this sort of series of episodes where like there's these different musical movements that all and it all ties together really really nicely thematically it's really concise and coherent it's not really terribly long of a song i think it's still under five minutes i'm looking at the song list yeah. now on wiki yeah it clocks in at 442 but it feels like it's a lot more than that you know like it really takes you on a journey and it has that like real sort of symphonic not progressive in like the proggy progressive sense but progressive in like it's like a ballad that tells a story and i, I really enjoyed yeah. that it had a really cool like ominous introduction that they recycle at the end to kind of tie the whole package together there's a lot of really nice vocal work going on there um and that was definitely i would say that is probably musically the most sophisticated song on the entire album and it's really really good um easily one of my favorites i i i knew from like that opening little hook i was like i think i'm gonna like this one and then the more it went on the more i was like yeah yeah this is it this is this is this is if the whole album was stuff like this it would be like a 12 out of 10 for me um but it's not and uh, but at the same time i kind of appreciate that there's a lot more i would say there's a lot of stylistic diversity across the board in this album like it's not just power metal you know to me yeah it's got more it's got a lot of like bluesy bits it's got a lot of like real kind of classic like hard rock kind of bits you know like like the song right before it mass pollution which at first it was like this has kind of like a sort of like deep purple and kind of like rainbow sounding vibe yeah it's kind of different and at first i wasn't sure how i felt about it but like by the time the chorus came around and i heard that it was like oh this is really really good and by like the end of it i was i pretty much decided that one was my favorite Mass Pollution was my favorite. I love yeah. the vocal works in, in the chorus. I love the guitar riff. I love the speed. I love the energy behind it. Uh, I thought it was really, really cool. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to repeat listens now that I kind of know what to sort of expect with each of the songs. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and even even the songs that I didn't like put the little heart tap on Spotify with, they were still like, like Robot King. I didn't like totally like, it, it wasn't mind blowing for me, but it was still like, yeah. this is solid. This is like a really good. Yeah power metal album through and through there's not a dud of a track on the at least the first 12 i didn't listen to the bonus tracks like i said but i'm sure they're good too yeah they're not bad but they're bonus tracks for a reason i think you know okay. it, it, it wraps up nicely with skyfall 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's such a really nice kind of closing finale to it all. Yeah. 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 You know, even even at even at its silly, silliest, which is Robot King, of course. <laughs> even at its silliest, I still think it's a it's a great album, and it's just going to grow. I think anyone who listens to it that likes is going to grow on. It's going to grow on them more and more as they listen to it. Um, like I like I said, I liked it right out of the gates, and a lot of it maybe have been may have been nostalgia kind of thing. Like I said, yeah, or just having that sort of like pedestal. You know, like, you know, you already like this band so much and you're going to kind of like have that yeah. high expectation and you know, you're going to like whatever they put out. Not yeah, I, you know, the thing about these guys, about these guys, is I'm a big fan of Michael Kiske and Kai Hansen. Like, they're the guys that I really like. And they're, they're like the guys that came back to the band. Dickinson. Yeah. Pretty much. Right. Like, like Smith and Dickinson, when they came back, I'm like, this got to be good, you know? Yeah. And Brave <laughs> that New was World 21 years ago, 20 years ago. Yeah. Right, twenty yeah. years ago or so, yeah. Pretty much, so. yeah. Jeez, I can't believe they've been so, back together with that full lineup for twenty years already. That's insane. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I, I, of course, I give this ten out of ten. Uh, what do you think? I, I would easily give it um, objectively as a power metal album, and given its place in the history of the band, it's easily a ten out of ten. Um, I'm not really sure that me giving it that grade really means much of anything though, as someone who's not like a super hardcore Halloween fan, uh, someone who yeah. only heard a handful of albums and doesn't really know the diversity of the singers and the lineups and stylistically the kind of musical journey they took. But first impression for me was solid, you know, like right out the gate, um, out for the glory, the opening track, it was like, all right, this is going to be like real solid power metal. It's going to be fast. It's going to be heavy. Um, it's, you know, it's really musically refined. It's well-produced. Um, my first impression on the first two tracks as a, as like, given that, like, I sort of had a quasi power metal expectation. My first mm -hmm. thought was to compare it against Rhapsody of Fire, which is my favorite power sure. metal band. And I would argue they're definitely a much stronger power metal band than these guys. Uh, even though Halloween is technically labeled as a power metal band, I think they're a little more diverse than that. And they're not like real specifically a power metal band. I, I could be wrong, but like, at least to me, like the first two tracks, while solid for me were like i've heard stronger faster more triumphant power metal um sure oh yeah, so for, yeah. for me it was kind of like all right these are good they're good tracks i'm not gonna lie i don't totally love them but then by best time yeah. that was the first one that like really hooked me in i was like oh this is different this is like really cool i like the vocal work i like the chord progressions i like the you know the the musical movement from bit to bit uh, i thought it was really nice uh, by the end of that one i found myself like really nodding along and kind of like hearing the chorus line in my head and really getting the mass pollution came and like threw me for a big loop big surprise with that one and then angel and then by the, by the time angels came up it was like wow this is just knockout after knockout after knockout this album is great um and even you know i, I want to say rise without chains kind of went back to like the first two where i was like all right this is good this is really good uh, i'm sure there are fans out there that absolutely love it um indestructible i really liked uh, i really liked the guitar riff in that you know i like the hook i like the soloing i like the chorus um Robot King was kind of meh for me, but I, I know it's sort of a sort of guilty pleasure for the band, probably like, let's do something like real over the top and silly. Um, so I appreciate its place in the album. Um, Cyanide, once again, had a really nice chorus line. Uh, I want to say Down in the Dumps was probably the heaviest song on the whole album, and I really liked it. That, that was definitely the last like real, real like big hook for me big draw mm -hmm. for me for what they're going for then orbit is just kind of like this little minute long transition thing where it's like a couple notes and then they get into skyfall which i've already heard part of so it was familiar but then yeah. uh, you know um skyfall is great it's the perfect way to close the album um i didn't yeah. love it as much as all the more concise shorter stuff throughout um i thought it's really funny like a lot of times with albums like this you either get like a real knockout like opening and closing and then some of the stuff in the middle is kind of meh. For me, it was kind of the opposite. Where like the first couple of tracks and the last track were like really good, but then the stuff yeah. in the middle was like, wow, this is really, really, really good. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. So I liked it. I definitely will listen to it again in the future. Um, give it another, well, you know, listen and get get more familiar with the material. I think it might be fun for me to revisit this after maybe hearing some of their other older stuff. Sure. Especially the yeah. Paris era stuff. I'll, I'll definitely yeah. try to check that stuff out and then maybe come back to this. And because I had a pretty good idea of who was who as far as when Kiski was singing and when it was not Kiski. Because, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. listening to Keeper, yeah. Um, yeah. 
So I recognized his voice for the most part. And he, his, yeah, no one sings like that guy. I mean, yeah, no, no he one's... really delivered on this album. He's got some real crazy high notes and he sounds yeah. really good in that high range. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just really consistent. And I'm, you know, and from what you tell me, he's just as consistent live, which just blows my mind. And I'd love to see these guys. So let's, you know, next time they come to like somewhere along the East Coast, we're going to have yeah. to make a trip and go see them, whether it's Philly oh, or New York oh. or wherever. So, well, let, yeah. me, let me say, let me say this before, before I forget, before we close it out, um, you know, you mentioned Rhapsody, Rhapsody, Rhapsody slash Rhapsody of Fire, whatever, whatever you want to call them. You yeah. mentioned Rhapsody as like your power metal band. Okay. Well, take that sound and you, you, okay. You know, that sound, they have a sound. They, yes. they perfected the power metal sound, which I believe started way back on Keepers, you know? So okay. when Halloween had this sound that they kind of helped invent we'll say nurture into uh, what became nurture into and yeah Atlanta. because there's other i mean rainbow uh the rainbow had power metal-esque type stuff too with uh gates babylon yeah. and king and stuff like that but the sound that halloween made in, on keepers you know kind of launched a million power metal bands like rhapsody and they would rhapsody would probably be the first to tell you like, like that was a huge influence on them so they took oh, it and ran sure. with you know, and and while they ran this way with it, Halloween ran this way with it. You know, and yeah. kind of, you know. So when you go back and you're like, okay, well, this is where Rhapsody's at right now because they took one element of Halloween and ran with it. You know, and yeah. this is where Halloween Which is I right love. now. I love it's like really refined, oh, yeah. focused sound. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, I you know. appreciate Halloween's stylistic diversity. Where like it's right. power metal, yeah, but it's yeah. not quite as much like specifically power metal. Which right, I mean, right, right. With the power metal Another, application, that part of it sort of fell flat for me, but I'm not yeah. going to say that it was lukewarm or anything like that, because it was still like good a example, real hot, solid album. Another good example would be Rush. With Rush and Dream Theater, you know, and you went through this whole thing, you know, yeah. when you were like, okay, you heard Dream Theater first and went back to the progenitors, which was would be they would say would be Rush, mm -hmm. and bands like Rush, and you're like, I don't get it. Because they took one thing that Rush was doing and just ran with it. Also, they took, you know, off of Candace and they took off of King Crimson and so on and so forth. But, yeah. you know, they, Dream Theater refined that into what prog metal is supposed to sound like now, you know. And yeah. that's a whole other yeah. conversation we can have, you know, um, that, and I'll, I'll mention this, if, you, if you're not on the board, go to the Rock Talk board on Facebook, on the Rock Talk group, actually. I'm still calling it a web board because I'm old. The Rock Talk group. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of discussion about that, and a lot of it is um, about uh, perfect albums. Perfect, and this one is a perfect album for me. Uh, yeah. I, I asked a I question a couple days. List. Yeah, I had a, quite a question. What 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 metal album would you listen to that you don't skip anything? This is one of them. And Dream Theater Images and Words is another for me. You know, or you know what? Uh, another thing I asked, uh, I think two weeks ago was like. What what band or album really changed like the course of music? Whether it be an album that changed the course of power metal, I would say Keepers. An album that changed the course of prog metal, I would say Dream Theory Images and Awards. Stuff like that. So we got some really good things going on in Rock Talk with Doc Rocker. Yeah, yeah there's definitely a lot of people getting involved too. You know, really great comments, really great suggestions from a lot of followers and fans and stuff like that. Uh, it's been fun. It's been it's been a lot of work trying to keep up with all the comments that people are posting because there's like stuff going on like every day on that board. It's great. Um, so which is great. I love it. Keep it going, guys. It looks awesome. So I know I poured tons of stuff onto that list, but I'm not the only one. There were a lot of people that were commenting a lot of different stuff too. Like not even just like you know, new wave British stuff, not just thrash stuff, not just progressive stuff. There, there's like everything being represented there as far as like what people consider perfect albums by their favorite bands. And that's, that, that always makes for a really fun discussion. So we might have to do like an episode where we just kind of go down that board and list and list all the different stuff and maybe sample a few songs. There, there, there's definitely like, I, there, there's a lot of crew heads down there that are posting some, some, some of that. And I'm definitely curious. Um, my appetite is whetted for for hearing more of that kind of stuff because i have like a surface level introduction to motley crew and i really like their sound i'd like to kind of dig into that a bit so it would be fun for me to to kind of go through and li listen to a bunch of stuff and kind of sample some songs and get get a good idea well, what tell you, like. what, you know what 
you know, an, another podcast we'll do, we'll go down the, the board because we went down the rock talk with Doc Rocker uh, group and went through the messages before a couple times, a couple podcasts were like that. Yeah, and we'll we've done a lot that of again. Those. Yeah, I definitely want to yeah, revisit yeah. that idea because I think that makes for some really good discussions. So that's it for now. I would say check out Halloween, Halloween as soon as they can. And yeah. of course, keep I'm on rocking. And yes, for waiting a week. You know, any of you out there that haven't heard this album yet, go on Spotify and listen to it right now. It is awesome. And it hopefully gets you turned on to this amazing band.